need to get up there. I need, Gozer needs to protect us. And I left Falzer in a little, oh, oh man, what did I do last time on the incorrigible party? I, I kind of remember you mentioning Blake Lakely had a safe. There was a safe in his office, yes. <laughs> yeah, right underneath that box I took. I realize how lucky we were with all those rolls in his office the other day, but <laughs> I'm wondering if I could go try to hack the safe. And you're you're continuing to, to twist and just listening very carefully, but you just you can't quite seem to find the position that you, you need. I'm going to put in my earplugs. Will, ah. will those help me? Okay, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Just cursory glance, you see these, these, these guards, they've been, they've been pummeled, but actually on your closer inspection, now that you're right up to them, you actually do see like what looks like these weird bite marks. kind of get close, you know, 30 feet from the door, you just see again above you what looks like two winged human, like, figures. They come you see them fly smash into two windows on the on the second story. What? Of the inn. If you're able to tell what you recognize, what you were looking at, then you'd be able to kind of pinpoint but it's difficult to tell. But you do know that your windows looked out onto this road. Right, I know. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna run up to, f to wake up Gozer. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, no one knows where I've been. Oh man, this isn't gonna be good. The adventure continues. Gozer, Shaft, Thuft, and Falzerin, you are all jolted awake at the sound of shattering glass. And I think uh, immediately we're gonna we're gonna sp split up because you're all in separate rooms. So I'm gonna take uh, Emily and Elena on mic first. So Gozer, before you went down for the night, as usual, you barricaded the door of your room. I did. You said that you had set up some traps on your window. What exactly do you do for that? Is it more like a, a an alert system? Yeah, I think, um, I assume the window would have some kind of sash on it so that if it opened, I would have a string with um, something that makes noise. So if the window moves or opens in any way, it's going to jingle. Well, as you come to, the whatever is jingling, jaggling, is jingling all over the place. The entire window is smashed in, and in front of you and Thuft on the floor stands a gargoyle as it's flown through your window going to jump to my feet, grab my axe, and scream to Blave. Okay, so we're going to roll initiative. Now, the cargo is not going to get surprise on you, but it has advantage on its initiative. Okay. I have an 18. That's pretty good. And I imagine I was holding Thuft while we were sleeping, so when I hear, hear this, I kind of, kind of, not really toss him aside, but kind of push him off me. Okay. So he probably tumbled to the floor. A little bit. <laughs> Okay, well, even with their advantage, or its advantage, you're at the top of the initiative board. Okay, um, I'm now standing on my bed with my axe. Um, I probably don't sleep with my shield, so I don't have that. And I'm going to jump at the gargoyle swinging my axe. <laughs> Shit. Uh, that's a six. <laughs> that is a miss. Probably slipped on the covers. Got all tangled <laughs> up. <laughs> so, and you can note that... It is still dark outside, so you have not completed your long rest, so you have gained no benefits from it yet. That's not good. You or Thuft. Although Thuft was pretty uh, significantly healed from Mother Celesta, so he's, he's all right. Bonus action? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and attack again. Uh, yeah, because I'm... You're not raging. No, because no, I, to... I raged. I raged, so that's my bonus action. Okay, you are raging. All right. Yeah, yeah, because I, I yelled to Blave. Oh, yes, of course. So Thuft is up. He pulls both of his shiny new short sword Go and up. runs at uh, runs at the gargoyle. He'll use his main attack action for his right hand and will use his bonus action to get a second attack on the, the left hand. He only gets one hit with his main, deals out six damage. And then the, the gargoyle kind of rears on Thuff and is going to try to grapple him. 
And, ooh, just barely as Thuff tried to squirm out of the way, but now it has a hold on Thuff, and he's holding him. And back to Gozer. Or, sorry, actually, uh, Bryn, could you roll me an initiative now? Nah, hold on. I gotta add to it, right? Twelve. Gozer, you're up. Okay, can I... So, I'm facing the gargoyle. Is Thuft between us? Yeah, because now the gargoyle is holding Thuft. So they're kind of occupying the same space. Well, not really. Technically, Thuft is, would be assumed to be like to your right. So you could still freely hit the gargoyle without the penalty. Okay, so I'm going to, instead of coming straight at the gargoyle, I'm going to kind of swing on the side that Thuft is not on. Okay. Trying to not hit him. And that is a 20. That is definitely a hit. And I'm swinging it two-handed because I don't have my shield on me right now. Okay. So that would be a D10. Seven. No, eight, nine, ten. Bryn, you come charging up the the stairs to the second floor of the Jiminy Eagle and are able to reach Gozer's room uh, in this second round of combat here. You said her door her door's shut and rigged and stuff, right? You do not know that, though. But it's shut. Well, yeah, from the outside of her room, yeah, the door's shut. Gozer! Gozer! Gozer, let me in! You all right? You in there? Gozer! Uh, I'm just going to bellow. Ah! And you also would have heard her rage as well, for sure. You want to try to get the door open? Yeah, I'm going to try to pick the lock and get in this door, or I don't know. What's easier for me right now? Kick it down type thing? If you try the, the handle, like it twists as if it would open normally, but you can tell that like something heavy is in front of it. So picking the lock wouldn't do anything. You could try to force force All the right. door open. I'm going to try to force my way in then. All right, make me a, a strength, an athletics check. Yeah, seven. Okay, you kind of put your shoulder into it, but it's not enough. There's a little bit, a couple inches of give maybe, but not nearly enough to, to even get your, even to look inside. So Thuft in this gargoyle's arms, struggling. Ah, king, 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 help me, help King, King, what do I do? And he's gonna try to escape this grapple. So he's gonna make, uh, he can make an acrobatic check or an athletic check, whatever's higher for him, which is gonna be acrobatics. Oh, and he's just kind of freaking out and just flailing uselessly against against this gargoyle. And now the gargoyle is going to spin away from you, Gozer, and take a step towards the window with Thuft. Would you like to enact your sentinel feat? Uh, yeah. Uh, does that how that work? Uh, so he's moving away from you and he's provoking an opportunity attack. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so I get an opportunity attack and then if I attack, if I hit him, his speed becomes zero. Fourteen. That is a miss. As he continues to go to move to the window and he just throws Thuft out of it. Oh, no. He's gonna, he's gonna make a, a, an athletics check himself to, to shove, basically. Thuft will contest it. Oh, and he's able to just keep... A, gr- yes. a grip on the gargoyle as the gargoyle is like trying to shake shake his arms as stuff is like grapple onto him. <laughs> and then right back to the top with you again, Gozer. Okay, um, so I hear Bren outside the door. You do, yeah. Can I, as a bonus action, move the furniture in front of the door? I would let you... Oh, boy. So are you frenzy raging? No. It would take your full action. You wouldn't get an attack. Do whatever Gozer would do, you know? Yeah, I think Gozer, in the middle of a rage, Gozer would just continue to attack. So, act to the back, hopefully. Uh, that's, uh, oh, that is 23. Oh, yeah, that's it. 11 points of damage. Okay, Bryn. I'm going to go get Shaft and Falls Ring. Was Shaft in a different room? Or what? Yeah, Shaft is in a, a room, and you know Falls are in, and you were sharing a room. Yeah, I'll go to Shaft's room first. Okay, so you run uh, you run to Shaft's room. Uh, so Thuft is again going to try to get out of this gargoyle's grasp. Uh, it cannot break free. And then this gargoyle will again try to shove, throw Thuft out of this window. Oh, and the gargoyle critically fails trying to shove him. <laughs> oh, Nice. <laughs> He actually moves the furniture out from away the door, right? <laughs> Come on. Thuff just, Thuff just has his iron grip on this gargoyle. And back to Gozer. Another axe attack, and that is a 16. That is a hit. 
Oh, that's only eight points of damage. Uh, so, Bren, you've taken off, and Thuft will again try to get out of this gargoyle's <laughs> grasp. Actually, you know what? Thuft is feeling pretty emboldened. He's actually going to, because while in the grapple condition, you are still able to attack. He's just going to attack this thing with his short swords. Seeing you just cleave into it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> King, let's get this thing. <laughs> attack, Thuft. Oh, he critically fails. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so in his wild swing, he actually catches his king only for four uh, slashing, which is halved because of your rage. He will continue to use his bonus action, though, to get that offhand weapon here. Uh, ooh, and he hits and gets a gargoyle for max damage. So since he is not two weapon trained, he does not get the additional uh, damage of his ability on that second attack. But he did roll a max six dice damage. And this gargoyle is just going to try one. He's actually just kind of had it with this, gar- with this goblin. <laughs> and he's just going to drop Thuft. And it's just itself going to try to f- get away from you both and fly out the window. So, he, that's, he's going to provoke two opportunity attacks from, from you and Thuft. Thuft misses. Oh, I'm sure I missed too. That's a nine. That is a miss. And the gargoyle, it kind of launches itself and then its wings unfurl as it's cleared the, the clear window and kind of flaps off into the, the still darkened night sky. All right, we're going to move on to Shaft. And Emily, we will say goodbye to you. Is it Shaft time? It's Shaft time. So, Shaft, you, again, you wake up to the sound of of this glass shattering, and as you kind of come to and open your eyes, the room is, it's pitch black, and you can see see that it's still dark outside. There's zero light in this room for you. Okay. I put my goggles on. Are you sleeping with them, like, next to you? Like, are they... Yeah! Hell yeah! A matter of fact, I I was attuning to them before I went to sleep, so they're right there. Of course, they would be at hand, absolutely. So when you slip them on... Enacting your dark vision, you see standing in f- uh, before your bed in a pile of broken glass is a, a gargoyle in, in your room as it's flown and smashed through your window. And again, you've noticed that it is still dark outside. You have not received any benefit from a long rest just yet. So we're going to roll initiative. So the gargoyle, is not, it doesn't surprise you, but it has advantage on its initiative. Okay. Do I roll again, Leland, or use the same? Oh, uh, you'll, you'll come in when you come in. Okay. I have uh, 16. Okay. So, this gargoyle 10 feet towards you on your bed, and it's just going to slash uh, at you with its stone fist. Uh, oh, it's definitely a miss. And, and then you're up, Shaft. Okay, I'll roll off the bed as fast as I can, grab my rapiers, and pull them from their, uh, uh, where they're, my pack, or laying on the floor. And uh, how far away is he from me now? He's within 10 feet. Oh feet. yeah, absolutely. You can you can get right up to him. Outside that window, I was on the second story. Is there any kind of like overhang or anything there where? Um, you just know like there was maybe like a three or four inch ledge kind of running, uh, you know, underneath the the window, just kind of around the around the building, you know, because you were spent a lot of time at the window, kind of watching out. So there's nothing directly beneath your window is the street. Okay. And this gargoyle is not a stone gargoyle, or is a stone? Gargoyle? It is. It is a stone gargoyle. Okay. And and now, as you roll up the bed, you hear in the room next to you, Two Blave! Oh, shit. Okay. So, um, is there any way I can get by him without uh, giving him an opportunity attack? Well, yeah, I mean, you could always disengage from him. Well, I mean, yeah, apart from that, I mean, he's within... Uh, okay, no, 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 there wouldn't be, because he came up to you and, and had to be within melee range of you to, to swipe at you. Fair enough. Okay, well, then I'm going to use my my bonus action to do ensnaring strike. Okay. Uh, so next time you hit a creature with a weapon attack before the spell ends, a uh, writhing mass of thorn vines appear at the point of impact. So I'll read more if I hit. Okay. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Uh, that would be that'd be a 17. Oh, yeah, that's a hit. Okay. 11 points of damage. So then the target must make a succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained by magical vines until the spell ends. Is it a large or larger? I guess it would be a larger creature for uh, me. It's actually medium. Yeah, well, it's okay. medium, right? So it is... Well, it says a large or larger creature has advantage on a saving throw. Okay, so it's only medium. It does not have advantage. Okay. Okay, so uh, it gets a 16. 
Okay, and my spell save would be, let's see, yep, so that would be, what is that, 10 plus wisdom? Is that what that is? Uh, 8 plus proficiency plus wisdom on So that'd be a 10, so you saved. So then no effect? If the target succeeds on the save, the vines shrivel away. Okay, and then it's just going to take its own swipe at you again uh, with a 23. Oh, yeah. 8 piercing damage. And it winds up again with a second attack, uh, only for a 14. 14 doesn't hit. Okay. And now you hear, you can hear Bryn out in the hall banging on Gozer's door, saying, Gozer, are you there? What's going on in there? Okay, I'm going to disengage. And so the door is shut, I assume. Mm-hmm. So if I disengage, do I ha- can I get to the door and open it and, and get out? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say it's maybe 15 feet to the door. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to run to Gozer's room. Okay. And as you pull open the door, you and Bryn almost kind of collide as it seems Bryn has decided to, to run to your room uh, after yelling for Gozer. Uh, so, Bryn, you uh, basically you're reaching for Shaft's, uh, the door handle to Shaft's room, and he just kind of opens, and you see him right in front of you, and behind him is standing this gargoyle. You're, you're up. What do you want to do? <laughs> I have this, like freaking shocked look in my face like I do right now. Shaft, I was coming to get you to help with Gozer. What the heck? You've got your own gargoyle in there. What's going on? Yeah, get, get the hell out of my way. What? But there's a gargoyle with Gozer too. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to get closer to Gozer. So Shaft, we can like retroact, like you fi- you can, because you can move through Ben, right? So you can f- oh. finish your movement, right? You, we don't have to. Oh, s- then I'm going to go, I'm going to go right under her yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Ride right towards Gozer. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, Bryn, do you wanna do you wanna take an action? I wanna shut the door to Shaft's room. Oh, okay, absolutely, done. All right, and then I wanna run to Falzerin, to our room. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'll will slide over there to where the door is, to Gozer's room. Is it open or closed? It is closed. Okay, so I'm gonna try to open it. Well, I'm sorry. So before you get to act again, it is actually the gargoyle now. We're kind of oh, back okay. at the top of the order here. So, Bren, you've left the door, so it's just <laughs> it. You see it open the door, and it kind of pokes his head out into the hallway and looks both ways. Sees Bryn running to the left. How did he open the door? He's, he's got appendages. He's, he's got hands. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it opens the door, and it kind of looks either way. It's like, uh, you know, like, like it's looking both ways as it's crossing the street, and it turns uh, left to go towards Bryn, and it moves uh, closer to you, Bryn. Of course. Of course. Okay, Shaft, you're up. Okay, I use my bonus action to do Hunter's Mark on the gargoyle for first, then I am going to run up and try to slice it, or, you know, poke it as I go with my rapier. So it's gone the opposite direction of Gozer's room. Basically, it was like Gozer, your room in the middle, and then Bryn and Falzer in the room on the other side. So its back is towards me. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, any chance I get some kind of advantage on the attack? I'm, af- I'm afraid Five E does <laughs> not have any any facing rules. No, no, I was just asking the DM. Yeah, of you course. Know, see how cool you are. <laughs> <laughs> see not how that, cool you are. Not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just do an attack then. Once again, that is a 17. Yeah, that's a hit. He is not taking any damage, right? It has. You, you, uh, are, you no, already hit no, it. No, I yeah. hit it. Yep. So I'll use Colossus Slayer also. So 15. Okay. Nice job. Okay, Bryn, what are you doing? You got a gargoyle on you. Uh, am I to Falzerin's door yet? Or am I to our bed? You're, you could get there in like another half a move action. I want a half a move. And I want to pound on the door. <laughs> Falzerin! Falzerin! Wake up! Falzerin! Get out here! There's gargoyles! And then I want to load my wood elf bow, and I take a shot at him. A really bad shot. Eight. That is a miss. And then, do I get anything else? Nope, that is kind of uh, the ex- extent it. of what you can do. So, what was that? Well, that was that was round three, I think. Uh, yeah, so that was round three. So, top of round four here, uh, Gargoyle. So, Gargoyle is going to close the distance on you, Bryn. And it's going to try to grapple you. So uh, we did do this incorrectly last time you were grappled. You can either right. choose to contest the gargoyle's grapple with uh, an acrobatics or an athletics, whatever is higher for you. It is a skill check. 
So go ahead and and. Well, I'm trained in acrobatics. There you go. Yes, yes please. Oh, are we playing with critical fails on skill checks? <laughs> we. We, we go back been. and forth with that. I know, we, we really do. We really need to settle on a proper one. So it's either a critical fail or a six. Okay, well, it, he rolled a nine, so still beats you regardless. Okay. And it wraps you up, and that was that was its action. Shaft. So the, the gargoyle is now wrapped around Bryn, and they're like 20 feet in front of you. Okay, so I'm going to attack. Ooh, there we go. Are you are uh, you you're engaging? I'm just, okay, yeah, so you're I'm just stabbing right. with my rapiers. So that's a 24 to hit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Nice shot. Yeah, Shaft. Woo. 22 points of damage. Oh, boy. What? Nice and then job. I'm going to use my bonus action for my second attack. Okay. And that is only 14. That is a miss. All right. Okay. Bryn, what are you, you're grappled. What are you doing? Uh, what, what do I have to do to get out of it? <laughs> uh, so you can make another... Uh, contested acrobatics. Okay. Yeah, that's probably my best bet, eh? Probably. You are still able to attack while you are grappled. If you wanted to pull your rapier out. I mean, you've now seen Shaft do some serious damage to it. Okay, I'll attack it. Okay. That's uh, 11. That is a miss. Yeah, great. Good choice, Elena. <laughs> and, okay, so while you're grappled, your speed is zero. Uh, you can you can yell for Falsy again if you'd like. Falsy, get your butt out here! And speaking of, so uh, Elena and John, you guys can leave the mic, and we'll get Bill back here. Oh, I All wanted right. another attack. I'll go get him. <laughs> so Falsy, and you suddenly wake up at the sound of smashing glass, and you kind of look around you, and you you can see at the window it's still nighttime. Sun has not yet come up, meaning you have not yet benefited from a long rest. Could you make me a perception check, please? That is a five. So, looking around your room, you you can't tell quite where the smash glass sound has come from. What would you like to do? I'm going to slowly sit up. So, it's dark, but I can, I can see in grayscale, right? Yep. With your dark vision, yep. I, I assume I have kind of like a vague idea that... that a loud sound woke me up. I'm a little disoriented. The distinct sound of shattering glass from what sounds like Shaft's room next to you. Okay, but I, I look at my window and it, the glass is intact. Your your window is intact, yeah. Okay. Do I... So Bryn's not in my room? Bryn is nowhere to be seen. And she has taken with her all of her items? She has. Uh, I was hoping I could use those sweet, sweet earbuds. All right, I, I guess I'm I'm gonna go out into the hallway and go to the next room adjacent to me. Which uh, would that be Shaft? I guess it would be. Yeah. As you stir and you get up from your bed, you see basically what looks like this mass of flesh come shooting out of the darkness towards you, and we will roll initiative. It's a 19. That is a good roll. Let's hope they stay that way. So this thing that is attacking you you are surprised by it so how that works i think we've actually explained this a little incorrectly despite playing it correctly basically it gets to act before you do basically so you are at the top of the initiative track you rolled higher than this creature and when you are surprised you on your turn uh, your first turn, you cannot take any actions or reactions. So you effectively get to do nothing. And as this thing has lashed out at you, it's going to make an attack roll here. It, ooh, uh, 13 to hit. That hits. You take 12 necrotic damage. And can you make a strength saving throw, please? That's uh, 13 for the strength saving throw. So as this, this mass of flesh has come at you out of the dark... It wraps you up, and you start getting dragged towards this figure, and you're, I can imagine Falzern is, like, getting flashbacks to his 1v1 with the ogre as this massive, oversized toad steps out of the shadows, and its tongue has reached out and grabbed you as it's pulling you closer to it. And you are 
grappled by its tongue because you failed that strength save. And it pulls you within five feet of itself. And now it can use a bonus action. It's going to try to bite you. Gets a 14 to hit. That's a hit. As its jaw is kind of open wide and it rears towards you, it completely engulfs you and swallows you. So you are now blinded and restrained as you're now in its mouth and down in kind of its gullet. I've just been pelicaned. You've just been pelicaned. That's exactly right. Okay. So I'm I'm grappled. Uh, so no, and you are you are now blinded and restrained. Okay. What does restrained? What's the difference between restrained and grappled? Or I guess what's the implication of being restrained? So your speed is still zero. You you literally you're, you're like immobilized, right? Um, any attacks against you would have advantage. You have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. And your attack rolls have disadvantage. So, uh, back to the top. <laughs> you are now swallowed. What would you... <laughs> so I can still make attacks, but I just have disadvantage on attack rolls, right? That's right. So it's a giant frog. A uh, toad, specific. Toad. I am sorry. Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, I'm out of spell slots, so it's cantrips all night, baby. I feel like toads don't like fire. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use firebolt... So okay. I'll roll twice. <laughs> There's no need to roll twice. That's a one. Ooh, you are unfortunately going to firebolt yourself. So 1d10 fire damage. So three fire damage to myself. And at the start of its turn, you can kind of feel like it's moving, um, as if it's like walking. But you also take 15 necrotic damage while inside of this thing. And I'm unconscious. Okay. Let's call everybody back. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the top here. I'm going to amalgamate these initiative tracks. And Gozer, what are you doing? Uh, if it's not too far away, I'm going to ring of the ram, the, the gargoyle. Okay, you can absolutely try. It should be just at the edge of your range. That is a 15. That is a hit. Sweet. That's actually 13 points of damage. And as your spectral ram... Is released from the last charge, I believe, on that ring for today. Uh, it just, right at it, as far as it can reach, it smashes into this gargoyle and it crumbles into stone as its pieces drop to the ground. Ah! And then I look for Thuft. Thuft is, yeah, king, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to grab Thuft and give him a hug. Oh, and he hugs you right back. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze Even though he accidentally hits you. He's a little scared. <laughs> he, for a second there, he's a little scared like you were going to bonk him one. But Yeah, and then I'm going to bonk him one for hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go back out to the hall here uh, with the gargoyle. Now, still grappling Bryn. Yep. It is... So it is just going to make one attack against Bryn as it has you in its other hand. Uh, 16 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Three slashing damage. And shaft. I'm going to attack again. Uh, that's going to be a 10. That's going to miss. And then the next one's a 16. That's a hit. 12 points of damage. And you also, you do enough as you just ram your, your rapier somehow through this stone creature as it crumbles around you. And Bryn, you kind of drop back to your feet as it hold is now released and it, it is dead. So it crumbles down as a pile of stone That's onto like the ground? It's like a pile of stone, yeah. Okay. Bryn lands and kicks a bunch of the stones and is like, yeah, Shaft! Thanks, buddy. That's how you do it. <laughs> and we can drop out of initiative now. Do I hear? Are they outside my door? They are out in the hall. You can hear, like, Bryn's her, like, exclamatory, yeah! <laughs> and, uh, Gozer, you also heard, like, Bryn yelling for Falzern as well. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go into our room. Look look for Falsey. Yeah, you open the door and the room is empty. Empty. He's gone. There's nothing in this room. Nobody in this room. Why don't you uh goes there have you have you joined them now? Are you kind of Yeah, I'm going to push aside the the dresser that was blocking the door and throw open the door real quick and have my axe out and jump out into the hall and go ah! <laughs> and you you kind of <laughs> Turn to your left and you just see kind of like Bryn and Shaft as they're kind of opening the door to, to Bryn and Falzern's room. I pee a little. 
All right, well, if Falzern's <laughs> not there, is his stuff gone or is his stuff there? Shaft and Bryn, you make me a perception check. 19, uh, 21. Eight. So, Bryn, you you see that, yes, Falzern's bag is just kind of, you know, slumped next to his bed where you had, had seen it as you had left um, the, the, an hour or two before. But the room is the room is otherwise as the room's you left intact, it. intact, no window broken. Window yeah. is is still intact. All right. Any clue as to like was the door open, was the door closed, locked? The the door was not locked. Is there a pile of stone in there? No stones. Can I I'm going to go looking for him. I'm just going to keep checking rooms and Where where is he? Hallway. I t- I have no idea. Did something finally kill him? Hey! You okay? We're fine. We can't find Falzerin. Who? Falzerin! <laughs> He's probably under a bed somewhere. So, and now you guys hear in the distance that same horn blare that you had heard before you had really gotten into the golden and before you fought that metallic bull. You kind of hear the same alarm go off as the commo- there's a commotion, of course, now down where all the the few patrons that were still left uh, drinking in the in the bar of the Jiminy Eagle, they've heard all of this, the glass shattering and, and the, the half-orc cries and all of this. I, I run back to my room, pick up all my stuff, and then say, let's go! This is not going to get any better sitting here. What do we do with Falzerin's stuff? We'll find him. He'll show up. Alright, so I leave his stuff, we go out looking for him. Yeah, I just, I need my stuff to kill things. Oh yeah. I haven't been back here for a couple hours, so I, I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he ducked out to go do something, or maybe something took him. I mean, that gargoyle had me pretty good in its grasp. You had gargoyle. There's uh, stones on the floor here. That I didn't a have a gargoyle. That one came out of Shaft's room. Yeah. Gargoyle attack Gozer too. And thought. Yeah, I know. I tried to get in your room, but your dang dresser was in front of the door. Gozer tried to be safe. All right, Gozer well, not, was not safe. I'm not that strong. Do we hear anything going on down in the first yeah, floor? Yeah. Um, now, as you guys are kind of ex- exchanging exactly what it, what's transpired over the last like 30 seconds or so, um, finally some guards are arriving at this inn. Uh, as you know, people have yelled, gone yelling and screaming and 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 calling for them. Seemingly, uh, like, uh, the response time seems a little slow, especially considering the, the state of this city. Well, Bryn looks, to, Bryn looks to Shaft and Gozer and says, I was just coming back into the inn, and the two guards parked outside were dead. And what? some kind of, like, mysterious frog thing appeared, and I shot an arrow, and he disappeared. I don't know. So then I saw the gargoyle, and I ran right to Gozer to try to get help, and that's that's when all this crap happened. So I don't whoa, know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You were outside? Yeah, you I was saw outside. saw a frog man? I was outside. I saw... I don't think it was a man. I don't know. It was a frog. <laughs> it's a frog that attacked me. It, like, snuck up on me from behind. But that's why the, the response is so slow. The guards outside were dead. You kill guards? No, it wasn't me, I swear. Okay. I only need four hours to sleep, right? So I was just taking a walk, and... And... Uh, I don't know what's okay. going on. Okay. I guess grab... Grab Falzerin's stuff, and let's... Let's go see where the hell he's at. We gotta get the hell out of this town. So Bryn goes and finds Falzerin's stuff, and shoves all his stuff in the bag of holding, puts the bag of holding sure. on her hip. Sure. Sure. Okay. I assume that's where Falsey had probably stored his stuff anyways. Anyway, right? is it, yeah, just one is his little clothes, satchel. Are the clothes there or, you know, like, yeah. like he disappeared or does any, it look like all his... Oh, I get what you're saying. Um, no, any belongings that you would carry on a normal traveling day are left behind. He has his staff with him. There's, it's not like somebody poofed out of a, a set of clothes. Right, if, yeah, right. Know. Okay. Let's go. I take off and go to the stairs and Where head we down. go? We're going down to find Falzer and get the hell out of here. Why we this find st- him? We don't need him. Well, well, if we run into him on our way the hell out of here, then maybe we'll take him along with Falls us. Falzer tired. Well, you're just going to have to wake up. You're going to die if we stay here. I've not wanted to stay in this town for a long time. Let's get the hell out of here. I'll get my stuff and I'll get make sure Thuft has his stuff and we'll start slowly heading after Shaft. Uh, once you get down to the to the 
ground floor of the Jiminy Eagle, like there's full scene of like guards here and there. They're talking to the patrons and trying to figure out what has gone wrong, what exactly has happened. Uh, and then you guys notice among them is the the same guard that Bryn had pickpocketed the note from Mother Celesta from. He's kind of in amongst them, and he sees you, and he kind of waves waves you over. Hey, yeah, what the hell's going on? Well, that's what we're here to find out. What were you guys in the in the Jimmy Eagle? Yeah, there was a bunch of crap upstairs. We killed it, but you know what's going on down here? What's going on outside? What's what's the hell's the horn for? Well, uh, there there was an attack, wasn't there? Well, yeah, but you know, not, is it just here? Or was it was out in the town. I mean. That horn was for our attack? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. As, as far as I know, this is the only reports that we've gotten is something happened at the Jim and Eagle. There's a couple gargoyles. I mean, we took care of them. So, so, the threat's over. Uh, uh except we're... Our friend we're, is uh, missing. Missing a guy, <laughs> yeah. Like... Don't know, I'd call him a friend. He's abducted? You remember the skinny guy that looked sort of useless that walked around with us earlier? Bryn, Bryn whispers to Gozer... To Gozer, he, you might think he's a friend, but no one will go after someone who's not our friend. Like, we need, come on. Do we really need him? If he's our friend, people might help us. Come on. If, if, if something's happened, then, then we'll, help you, we'll help you find them if something's taken them. We, we gotta find him. I have a feeling something took him. Something's going on. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause for a second, and let's we'll just go over a few mechanic things here. So, your long rest was interrupted. Should a long rest be interrupted by uh, strenuous activity for more than an hour, then you basically have to, it's reset. You would have to get do that whole eight hours over again. You guys are about six hours into this long rest. Do they get benefits of the short rest at all or no? They do not, no. Okay, bummer. Well, I had my long rest, so. Did yeah, Bryn is, Bryn is fully up because of her, her trance. And she's on a high from her heist. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not interested in going back to bed. I'm I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah. So you guys, you know, are with me or are you can catch up to me. No, I'm with you, Chef. Gozer, you can handle it. What I'm gonna rule is that the amount of sleep that you guys did get would have been about as much as you would sh- uh, were you out somewhere where you needed to set up watch. So you will not be, you will not suffer the uh, level of exhaustion for continuing to be active uh, past this 24-hour period, but you still do not get the benefits from your long rest. Okay. 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 We're. Uh, I, I push by the guards and I go, go look for him. We're going to be looking around for him too. I have a mechanics question though. So, but is it the next day? It's not the next day yet. Not quite. So how? The, when does the ring of the ram reset? It gains 1d3 charges at dawn. Okay. And it's not dawn yet. What time of day is it? Uh, it's, it's pretty close. Okay. So I head out. Uh, what do I see when I walk out the door? You, again, you see like half a dozen guards. They're talking to some, some of the people that must have been in the inn. You also see kind of further down, maybe 40, 50 feet uh, from the entrance of the, the inn, down the street, two like bodies that another set of guards are kind of taking and carting away. They're, they're very clearly the, these dead guards that Bryn had spoke of. I'm going to look and see if I can track these gargoyles or some kind of creature leaving the, uh, the inn or the bar and see if I can figure out if something took Falsey and carried him off. Absolutely. So roll me an investigation check to look for something. And Bryn, you notice that the torches along the street have been relit. Okay. 17. Okay. Where exactly are you kind of investigating out here? What do you want to kind of look? So basically where, where your windows of your room were and like where the gargoyles came in, like this is the street that those windows faced. So you're like, you're literally like looking out uh, the front of the Jimny Eagle. So if something were to move from uh, Falsey's room, then it certainly would have had to have gone down somewhere onto this road because it could not have gone through the door that you guys are standing out of, right? Right. So I'm just going to surmise, you know, look and see if these things, you could, I, hopefully I can tell if they were walking towards the inn and if anything was walking away from the inn. So if there was two of them that came in or three of them maybe, then I'm going to see tracks for three. But if there's only one leaving because we killed two of them, 
then uh, I want to see if I can follow those tracks. Oh, like gargoyle tracks. Gargoyle, yeah, gargoyle. I'm assume. Well, I'm, I'm going to make the assumption there's three gargoyles and one of them took him. Okay. At this point, I don't know anything else. Okay. And if if not, then I'll look and see if there's any other tracks. Of course. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, so with your 17, you said right. Yeah. Yeah, your 17. Um, kind of immediately like underneath Falzerin's window, like because he on you know, on the on the floor compared to the second story. You don't see any no no like tracks of gargoyles, as you are pretty confident and can surmise that they they were not on foot. They would have just flown in, especially since you had seen them kind of circling uh, before you guys had bedded down, right? Or that brief shadow that you saw. But what you do find is kind of this spot of like this slime, like this goopy, uh, almost like um, like spittle or, or saliva of something. I'll look around and see if I can sort of figure which, if there's a trail of this slime. Sure, absolutely. So make a, a survival check now to try to follow this trail. Ooh, crit. Very, very nice. So as you're kind of spanning out, kind of almost every 30 feet, you you find another kind of droplet of this stuff. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey. This way, I think. I'm. Uh, there's some... Spittle stuff here probably came out of Falzer, and we can follow it. <laughs> <laughs> came Bryn, out of Falzer, and you say. Bryn wants to take a look at it, and uh, would she have remembered anything like that? Yeah, from- so Bryn, you, yes, you absolutely can't remember him. It was literally like five minutes ago that you had your own encounter. Right, that I shot the arrow. You with the- distinctly remember, like, its gross, long, gloopy tongue that it shot out at you. Right. And very reminiscent of what could have possibly come from this thing's mouth. So I'm like, haha, Shaft, this is from that frog guy thing. Remember I was saying I shot a frog and then... Oh, okay. Either way, let's go. It's, it, yeah. let's, let's head that way as fast as we can. I'll try to see if I can keep it Good track. catch. Bryn, you recognize the, the trail, basically. It kind of has a straight shot down this main road, mm-hmm. about to where you recall the torches had been snuffed. And then the trail, you need to pick up this trail again, kind of going down like a, a like an alleyway, right? Like this thing's moving as if it's trying to stay out of the torchlight. Okay. So do you talk to talk to your guard buddy at all, or are you guys just going on your own? I'm going on my own. If they want to follow, if they want to say something to the guards, that's fine. I'm just sort of looking around on the ground. Bryn will tell Shaft that, you know, just sort of what you said. Shaft, when I came back to the hotel, these lights and torches were all, like... Um, snuffed out, and now they're relit again, but the trail kind of curves right where the the torches would have been snuffed out. I don't know. Basically, I think this frog doesn't like light. Oh, good. Well, lucky I got my face. If that helps you keep now. tracking. Yeah, exactly. Let's, uh, yeah, let's see if we can... I don't want to wait. He's probably going pretty fast, so uh, we, we better make haste and try to find him. Yeah, come on, Gozer, let's go. You guard, you go follow. Guard what? What? Guard man. You guys can come with us. Gozer, you need to come with us. Come on, Gozy. Okay. Uh, what, what, what do we need Magic Man for? King? What? I thought Magic Man was useless. He I mean, is. I don't know. He got a cool shiny box, but I, what else? Shaft say we fi- We need to find him. Shaft He's got paying the, us. It's, it's, He's it's, got the little sh- box. Shaft, oh, Shaft get new king? Is, is Shaft king now? No! Yeah. Shaft no king. Goals are king. Shaft pay us. We need Shaft. We need money. Oh. Wait Buy a second. Buy more we, shinies. We have the box, don't we? Is it in a bag? Is it in a bag of holding? Do we have the little box? Bryn looks at Shaft and Gozer, and she's like, "Regardless, we are going to get Falzer and back. Come on." Uh, I'm with you, but can you check the bag? No. I just want to make sure whatever took him. If they took the box or not. We'll figure it out later. Let's go. Well, it's, it's really important. Is it, though? Yeah, give me the bag. No. Come on, we don't have time to argue about this. Just give me the bag. Gozer's no. going to walk off in the direction of the slime. I, f- I follow Gozer. Let's follow the let's follow the tracks. You guys need to follow me. Fuff will also follow. Yeah, right. Shaft's the one that's picked the I know where he. I know uh-huh. where he went. King. You, you could have already looked in the bag by now. Yeah, and Look I probably have, but you know what? I don't care about what you think, so let's go. I'm going to walk back to Shaft, and I'm going to push him towards the slime. 
find. Come on, you make we Gozer need... stay up. You go do what you do. Whether we all agree or not, we need the wizard in our group. He's burned bodies for us. He's dealt the final blow. Like he's helpful. We gotta go. All right, go. I'll go. I'll go. Well, well, I'll I go mean, follow. we we've been talking for so long. He's probably dead by now, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. True let's go. Stuff makes a really good point. So let's look yeah. in the bag. Maybe he has stuff on him <laughs> we can use when we find his body. This is so ridiculous. Brynn that is true. Laughs and just keeps walking. Okay, Actually, well, I don't know Brynn, where you're going. Brynn starts jogging. Well, I'm f- I'm following the tracks. You don't know where the tracks are. Yeah, I'm following them with you. I can see them. Uh, you can't follow with me because I'm still standing right here. I, I want to look you. in the bag. I'm pushing okay, you. Okay, I stand back up again. Leland, can I follow the tracks myself? You will have to make your own survival check to pick up the trail. This is so Oh. Matt 20, son. Oh. Okay, so uh, you also can pick up this trail as, you know, the few bits that, that uh, Shaft has already pointed out uh, does allow you to also pick it up. Okay, with Bryn takes off, then Gozer's going to forget about Shaft and start following Bryn. You guys have no idea where you're going. And then Neither I'll start do you. following. <laughs> sure, I know exactly where I'm going. Bryn crop dust Shaft. While we're, while we're walking. <laughs> <laughs> I hold my breath for uh, about a minute. <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow, uh, walk, looking and making sure I'm following the trail and, and probably be amazed that they're headed in the right direction. But uh, stay about 20 feet behind them as we go. And again, you're not enlisting any help from these guards. You're just I, kind of... I told the guard to come with us. That's what I was saying. That's what you want. Okay. I also think that we gave them a description of what Paul's ring looked like. That makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This guard will certainly come with you at uh, uh, Gozer's behest. And yeah, he tags along. And you kind of see a, as you just disper- finally the Jiminy Eagle kind of disappears into the distance behind you guys as you're kind of weaving through these alleys. Like these guards, if they've kind of been cert- it's been spreading out as if they're like. It looks like they're also starting to try to canvas the city in any way that they they can. Despite you picking up this trail, couldn't hurt uh, for them to be looking as as much ground as as they possibly could cover, right? So as we're walking, I'm going to say to Bryn, I'll walk up. You know, the whole reason we're in this mess right now is because he was talking to Isabella, right? You know who asked him to call Isabella back and use that that tome? Yeah, you, you. know why? That's exactly it's all right. You. I might have saved our lives. She might be here. This might be her minions. What, the gargoyles? Probably. Yeah. They're protecting yeah. her cave. I'm just saying, I think she's after him, not us. Well, we're here to, we're here to do a job, right? Either way. Are you way, a professional? Are you a professional or not? I'm a professional, but you're the one who asked him to call her back. That's probably when she figured out where we were. She knew where we were before that. Trust All me. Right, she whatever. figured out where we are when Falzerin told her. Yeah. Either way, Bryn's a little pissed at all, y'all, right now, so... That's all right. Just I'm just saying... trucking. We might be heading into a lot more than we can handle here. Bryn like Falzerin? Yeah, I think so. I find it interesting that Bryn is the one that's angry when she was also the one that abandoned the party in the middle of the night. Yeah, I mean, they're not asking me about that right now. That's so. true. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm angry because... They're acting like we don't need Falzerin. And he's no, like, I'm super not saying helpful. that. I'm he's not identified saying that. identified all this crap for me. We don't have anyone else that can identify all my crap I steal. You know, come on. We need him. <laughs> I'm not saying let him die. I just want to know if we have the box. Yes, let him die. If we have the what? <laughs> if we have the box. Yes, we need Shaft, the box. We have the box. Does okay, that make that's, it all any I, better? that's all I wanted okay, to know. We have that the way, box. That way, if you die, I can pick up the bag and I can still get the box. Uh huh, money. yeah. Let's go. You first. <laughs> so, could you all uh, make me another survival check, just to, to keep on this this trail? Uh, you can actually make it with advantage. Sorry. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like still have a six. Terribly. Oh no! I rolled a a five the first time, a seven the second time. I have a, a thirteen the second time. Well, luckily, you guys enlisted the help of this guard, who <laughs> is certainly <laughs> able to, as you guys start kind of drifting maybe westward, he kind of points north. Uh, guys, uh, actually, it's it's over this way, and you manage to pick it uh, pick it up back up again and can keep on it. Okay. You're kind of moving, again, it's a kind of zigzagging as if whatever you were following really did try to stick to kind of the 
you know, the, the shadowy alleys and, and the, the, the least likely to be populated or lit uh, places of the city. And um, after about an hour of moving basically northward throughout Goldham, the sun now is beginning to, to rise and you hit the edge of, of the city, basically the, the makeshift wall now, right? That the full of the, the overturned wagons and in between the buildings and the trail kind of stops right at this wall. At least on the ground, immediate ground in front of you it does. Stop, stops? Hmm. Can I take a look and see if it looks like it climbed the wall or went, or, you know, just try to see if it went over the wall? Sure. Same. What do you want, can uh, we all investigation? check that? Yeah, you can all investigate. Uh, 11. Using investigation? Yeah. 18. Come on, Gozer. Yes. Good job, Gozy, because I critically failed. <laughs> so, Gozer, you don't see any, any, you don't detect, like, this slime, like, on the, on the side of the wall at all. It's a little difficult to tell whether or not like parts of the wall have been jumbled as it kind of really is just a bunch of junk that's uh, piled up. So currently you still basically right on the ground uh, in front of this wall, kind of this gloop of this, this saliva, this slime and no sign or immediate immediate sign of an additional direction. Is this the way we came in through the rubble that we came in? We didn't come in through the north. Yeah, no, this is a... You were a little more uh, east the way you came in. Okay. I thought we came from the west. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the other east. <laughs> the yeah, other that's east. Means. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Bryn wants to use her ring of jumping and, and jump up and take a look. Okay. You can easily... Again, it's like 15 feet. You could hop right up there. Or you reach up 15, can, 16, right? With a running start, I can reach 16. You can get to 16. Okay, so then just make a, a quick strength to pull yourself up. Yeah, my strength is great. Five... Well, luckily for you, the DC is five to pull yourself up. So, yes. so you get right up on top of this wall. What are the, what are the rest of you guys doing? The guard is um, hesitant to to go on the other side of the wall. I just want to look while I'm up there, but yeah. Okay, so why don't you make uh, make another investigation check then? I'm not gonna go down there quite yet. Sixteen. So you now you're on the other side of this wall. You you are able I'm to not pick on the up. Other side. I'm no, on top of the looking wall. at the other side, okay, right? Okay, looking okay, down okay, on the other okay. side of this Just wall. Just clarifying. No, yeah, you're on the ground, other side of this wall, 150 <laughs> feet away. Six ant kegs come up and all grappling. <laughs> 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 what looks to be about again 30 feet ish from the the glob on the inner part of the wall. You you can see now, especially in the daylight, mm-hmm. uh, with with the sunlight coming up. It's kind of like, you know, almost reflecting off of this this wet surface. So you have managed to pick up this trail again on the other side of this wall. It's on the other side. It is. So, Brandon, can, can you roll me... Roll me a... Jesus. What do you, what do you roll? Roll me a, a, a nature check. 18. So you recall how this toad thing that you had encountered kind of slipped and almost vanished into the shadows. Yeah. Uh, very uh, reminiscent of possibly maybe some type of teleportation ability. Yeah. That's why I was surprised there's a trail. But he doesn't like sunlight, assuming, right? So if the sun's coming up, can he just disappear and I find falls are laying on the ground over there or something, or what? <laughs> well, you've only encountered a, a brief glimpse of it and, and very short in, uh, encounter of its abilities in shadow, so... That could be a logical assumption. Hey guys. Yeah. Uh, the trail you, you continues over. Yeah, the tr- no, I don't see him, but the trail continues on the other side of the wall. I don't know. <sighs> Drop the rope know. down. We'll come up. Okay. I lower my rope. Okay. Uh, so you tie her off, and could you all just make me a quick strength check to pull yourself over the rope? Who crit? Now I get it. Yeah. I'm wasted crits tonight. Twenty. And theft. Who's never crawl, climbed this wall yet? He does get up with a ten, and again the guard is. I'm, I'm sorry, but this this is the end of of my jurisdiction. I I can't just abandon the city. I do hope you find your friend. I give him a thumbs up. And we, we will we will continue searching. Okay. Should he still be in the city? Goes or just ignores the guard. Turns it uh, back to him. Peace out, dude. Bye. <laughs> we all climb up and we all climb down, and uh, yeah. we're on the other side now. Okay, before we make any movements quick, there's traps all around this damn city, if you remember correctly. 
let's take our time. Right. And, so you're uh, still in in the the sec. Okay. Think of it like three kind of rings, right? The wall would be the innermost ring of the fence, and then the collapsed buildings where the rubble and like similar terrain as the rubble with the ankegs that would be the second and then finally the third the very outskirts of the city this kind of mile radius of yes these these pit traps and um these uh wooden like uh spike barricades kind of thing okay so then we'll i guess we'll just keep moving you know to where we think that what we're we're just going to keep tracking as best we can okay so why don't you all go ahead and uh make me one last survival check here Ooh, nice uh four with advantage or eight, eighteen. <laughs> Mine is only eight. Okay, so Shaft, you now, in addition to the the spit, which is now you kind of seeing more frequently than just the thirty feet, but you also now see what look like uh, large five-toed like footprints. It's clearly not human. Okay, uh, I, can I surmise this is something I've sort of seen before? Especially with the descriptions you received from Bryn, you definitely uh, have a, a, a you have a very good idea of what this thing is. Yeah, I think I know what it is and where it came from. Okay, so uh, let's keep on going. Okay, so you just continue northward, kind of through through the the rubble section. Are you what kind of pace are you guys setting? Very careful. Um, as soon as we get to where we know there are traps set, we're going to slow down. But in that inner wall, I think we're just going to go normal speed. Bugs here? What do Maybe. you mean? The ant kegs? Bugs. Yeah, the big ones that grab me? Yeah. Probably. I'll pick Thuffed up and put him on my shoulder. I was going to say, um, you know what? So we can walk really slow and careful. Shaft, if you don't mind going first, I can put in these earplugs and I can hear movement. But I will be otherwise deaf, so... You gotta go in front of me. Stop! Uh, stop if you need me. That's what earplugs. What? Yeah, it's one of the things that I stole from Blake Legley. Oh, okay. So you you need me to walk in front of you, and you're gonna listen if you hear anything rumble, and you're gonna let well, me know. Well, Leland, would him walking be like interference type thing? You would certainly detect, but think of it as. Be like I can listening to a conversation in like a crowded room. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, chef. Like if you walk and I hear us walking, obviously I won't hear anything else. But like it, t- it picks up tremors and vibrations. So, like if I hear anything coming after us. Yeah. So I think that the best thing is to tie Thuffed up, let him walk in front of us. That seems to work out well. And then uh, we'll just head pretty much uh, north. I have a feeling that we're all headed to Zexa. Feel like we are, but let's not tie Thuffed up. That's hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Th- th- Thuffed don't like spikes. No, no, no. Th- th- Thuffed don't like spikes. No, nobody likes spikes. But you want to do what your king wants you to do, right? Gozer. Gozer, don't tie Thuffed up. Come on. Thuffed is on my shoulder, and I'm just gonna pat him and say, Thuffed, stay. Yes, king. Yes, king. All right, let's go. Okay, so you have your uh, earbuds of the bullet in. Bryn? My earbuds are in. All right. So as you you now have hit where this this rubble right, and they've purposely collapsed these buildings, and with your tremor sense, the thirty feet, you're able to move through this, and you know you kind of veer off to your right a little bit, and you get this this sense of right at the outer skirt of your your tremor sense, you feel something moving beneath beneath the ground, and you're able to steer the party away from. Yeah. those tremors and you do make it through the rubble without incident and now you are in to this this the def- mile defense kind of around the city of, of these miscellaneous pit traps again some some are triggered some are not uh, various uh, various states of decay and or construction of these defenses that they've hastily erected but now you are uh, f- out officially out of the city and on on the outskirts of it at the, almost the the northernmost tip of it and kind of to the to the uh, west and east of you, you know, like those would be where the two main roads coming out of Golden would be. the 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 westernmost road would lead to Zexa, and the easternmost road leading to Port Randis and forking further into the foothills uh, northward. Okay, I stop. 
Okay guys, we have to make a decision here. And I know it's not going to be easy for one of you. But I can tell you right now, it pretty much, uh, Izzy has probably got her grasp on to Falsey. And, uh, I, I don't think it's in our best interest to mess with, with her. So, we have a choice. We can go to Zexa and try to save him. Why do you keep trying to ditch Falzerin? I'm not trying to ditch Falzerin. I'm trying to finish a job. We've known this guy for a couple weeks. I, I, I don't have anything against him, but I'm not going to die for him. We got his stuff. That's everything we need. Wizard. Gozers. Gozard, fine. Wizard. Are you sure? Wizard. I mean... Gozers. I, he's, he's yours? Yes. Ah. Well. Okay, Bryn. You know. <laughs> yeah. The idea here is to get this... I know. Just get the cash. It's torn... And, uh, it's t Listen. Shaft, as torn as I am, and as, as much as I love to finish a job, I just... I don't like that you're telling me what to do. So it's making me want to go I'm get I'm not telling or... you what to do. What I'm telling you is, if we go there, there's a pretty good chance we're not going to collect money, and there's a pretty good chance we're going to die. Oh, oh, I Shaft. I you know I... that. Yeah, here's something that maybe I should have told you a little earlier, but this seems like a good time. Uh, the mayor of Golden probably isn't going to pay us anyway, because uh, I pull out my little bag. Chink, chink. Uh, I already got the payment right here, baby. Oh yeah, how much? Uh, well, seeing as when I went back to the hotel to count it, I haven't really had a spare minute. Um, I haven't really more, counted it more, yet. More, more than what we agreed to? More than I could count at the time. Alright, I'll make you a deal. Give me the bag of holding, and I'll go with you to get the wizard. The whole bag of holding? All his stuff? Yeah. Yeah, if we find him, I'll give him his stuff back. If we find that he's dead, I get my split and what's in the bag. If not, I'm heading down to get the job done. What so you're expecting get? me to still pay you your split, eh? What goals well, are get? Hell yeah! You just stole the money I was going to make! I mean, I don't care that you stole it. Good job! And I, we don't, now we don't have to screw with these towers. I really don't give a crap about the towers. Well, I mean, I but, also got a lot more information about the towers. That's kind of what well, I was doing last night. But anyway. That's, a, that's irrelevant, really. In, any, mean, in any event... Based off of what we got from Detmer and then what I stole from the safe, we're breaking pretty even. Like, we don't need to put our lives in danger for these towers right away. You're right. Or the wizard. What? Hey, Leland, is there any trees or anything around here? Um, you're kind of in this kind of deserty zone, so there's not really much as far as uh, vegetation. Oh, Guzzard's just going to walk off a little bit, lay down on the ground, and start to go to sleep. <laughs> okay. You're getting what you want, right? You're not yeah, out anything. Give me the I, bag. I really don't want to give you the bag of holding. I understand that. I really don't want to go save the wizard and die in the process. It's a cheap... I mean, you're talking about a 500 gold piece bag of holding with a little box in it that we probably won't even use anyway. I just need to get something for me doing this. Or I'm just going to go back to Detmer and get another job. Hey, if they argue for an hour, can I take a short rest? Well, you guys aren't moving while you speak, right? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I'm i at a crossroads here. Okay. Shaft can get a short rest, too. It's technically light activity, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is true. So so what are you thinking? Let's just say that Brynn and Shaft argue for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you do legitimately want to take an hour, you can. You have, of course yeah. you can. I, I, I do think we should sit down and talk about can this I, for a while. Yeah, for the while that we're talking, can I roll something to try to convince Shaft, you know, whatever, that I need to be the one? I'm not going to I'm not gonna give you a persuasion check, but I just, you literally sh can try to convince Shaft. Like, it's not, there, I can't set a DC for a player like that, right? Not like as if, you're, if you're talking to an well, NPC. He rolls, I roll. See what happens. You gotta, think, you gotta say something creative to. I'm Here, here's the thing. Have to try and persuade. Here's him. the thing. You know, it's. I, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying here's your option for me to help you. It's a big difference. I understand that, and I think we need you because you got away with Izzy. You know, but, Izzy likes you. 
All right, you're absolutely right. So give me the bag. Uh, let's cut to Falzerin by himself. And that's our show. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. For your own musical inquiries, contact jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. All other music and ambient noise is courtesy of tabletopaudio.com. The Encouragement Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. Visit criticalhitdesign.com for all of your graphic design needs. You can find more info on the characters and world at encouragementparty.com. Enjoying the show? Have any questions or rules corrections? Email us, contact at encouragementparty.com, or reach out on social media. The Encouragement Party on Facebook and Instagram, at EncouragementPar on Twitter, using the hashtag AfterPartyIP for a shout out during our behind the screen after party episodes that drop every fourth release. Happy adventuring!